Hello and welcome to this third part on Prelude Number no. 1 by Villa Lobos. We're going to be diving into that wonderful second section with all of its E major harmonies and chords. If you haven't, check out the first two videos I've done. I've completed the Prelude now. They're up and out on YouTube. Failing that, let's dive in and check out all of the goodness that Villa Lobos has to offer in the second section of Prelude Number no. 1. Alrighty, welcome to the wonderful E major section. So this is a B section. We're kicking it off straight away with an E major arpeggio. You're looking at right hand, P, 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 I, M, A, P and M, I, before we get into the next bar, okay? So it's a broken arpeggio of an E major chord, nothing to it. On to the third, up to the fifth with fingers one and four. Then you'll, the next bar is going to be five. Put your second finger down, pre-prepare it for that hammer on. One, slide down to an open E. Bar at second fret with the third finger on the sus. Hammer on with the third. Back to an E open back to open E's and back to that arpeggio again. This repeats. And look, as soon as I play that B on the 3-4 bar, my second finger is down here, ready to rock. That is in the score, it's got to be there. Those glissandi are going to come back a little bit later on down the line when we get into this section. So it is part of this piece, really important part too. This E major arpeggio repeats no less than nine times. So it is worthwhile getting used to playing it. To get a sense of the flavor and because Villalobos has put accents specifically underneath onto the B strings, I have played it with a thumb. But it is possible to play it very classically. doesn't quite have the flavor. It is also possible to push it in the other direction and play it so all thumb strokes in a zapateado in a flamenco striking in a flamenco technique. So that is a possibility as well. So that is your choice. It is in keeping with the style. This is Brazilian folk music. Altogether, those four bars sound like this. Welcome to the next micro study. So we're going to pick it up off from the E major arpeggio again. From this point, we are heading up to 12th fret, so you need to laser ahead. And 4th finger on 12, you're going to go into half bar at 9. 3rd finger, 11 on the C sharp, 1 on the E, 2 on the A. So we're in this wonderful A major chord. Your 4th finger is going to slide down to the D sharp. And then your 4th finger is going to have to do a hammer on. Now, if you have been following the Villa Lobos 12 and 12 challenge, you will already know that etude number nine is the perfect vehicle to practice this. So if you need to, check that video out. There's an entire whole set of lessons for practicing etude number nine. Etude number nine is going to give you that left hand strength there. Anyway, back to prelude number one. And then we're into an E major chord at 7. Stop in the bass. Rest stroke down to stop that A bass note. Now this is just the bottom end of an A shape chord. And I'm using fingers 2, 3 at fret 9 and 1 on 7. And I'm giving it a lot of wiggle, just like you're going to have to do here. Then this needs vibrato. 
obviously don't cut it off. <laughs> Villalobos has expressly said long held notes. After this point, guess what we go back to? Yep, E major arpeggio. We then slide up again to 12 and we're into an E minor chord shape this time. Half bar at 10, fourth finger on the high E, first finger on the D. And then you can choose to slide the half bar down, or you can choose to, to switch into a first finger, whichever is more comfortable for you. Either way, you're going to end up back at that E major chord, so it doesn't really matter. I prefer the half bar option because it, it allows my note here to slide into that note, whereas to take that off, it's gonna cut it short. So again, that's a phrasing option and it's up to you. After that, we go back into the opening material. So from here, back in. So altogether, those those seven bars sound like this. Points is this is the most evocative bit. It is also the highest note of the section, so you need to make that a focus of your musicality. Be very musical about this, make great musical choices. You can go um, Tasto, you could go full on Ponticello, but either way, the next chord needs to be different because it is different. There is a sharp contrast between the major and the minor there. Let's check out the next section. Okay, welcome to the next micro study. So the next micro study shortens the opening material. It still uses the E major arpeggio again. Now, in the 1950 edition, there is an E missing, but it does a repeat there. It is just two open E's, three times in a row. heralding a change, a change of tempo, a change of mood, a change of everything. So that's really important. We're moving in those couple of bars, 3-4, 3-4, 2-4 into a quick 3-8. So you need to be aware of that. The 3-8 works on an A minor 7 chord with the 4th finger on the 7th, which you should hopefully have prepared on the bar before. Minor seven, third finger down, third finger hammer on, fourth finger back on. So I've got one and two on the E and the C natural. Now, from a right hand perspective, you can roll the chords, but it would be better and more in keeping with the style to play a fast thumb through those two bass notes. That together I am a and then we're into the next section so there's not really that much to this micro study we've already seen the E major arpeggio we've already seen this B with the sus they have just been condensed one bar two times and then the E major with the natural third the A 
minor 7 because Villalobos is obviously trying to move back to E minor. Okay, we'll check out the bar chords in the next section. This is what this all sounds like put together. Okay, welcome to the exciting climax of the B section. That's the uh, Pocomeno section and it is all bar chords. So we have a B major, E shape, seventh fret, pulling back on the finger one, not squeezing. I am not squeezing with this thumb. In fact, you should be able to play this with the thumb off just to double check that you're actually pulling back on the guitar. So, B major, fret seven, C major, Back to B major, A major, G major, F natural major, and then we get this wonderful B7 chord with an F sharp in the bass. Interspersed between all of these is this lovely idea. chord with a harmonic, a double harmonic on the end. So you need to be able to play your chord, P, I and M for the middle chord, slide those fingers up and in, in essence it is just going to be fingers two and four, but if you can take them all up and then your fourth finger is going to play the harmonic. Obviously harmonics are nice and clear over fret 12 and if you really want them to pop, come back and play them here in this section of the guitar, nearer the bridge. Again, we're still in 3 8, so it's a nice brisk tempo. You have got to make sure that your chord shape is nice and clear. Not this. Can you hear all the notes are not nice and clear? So you want nice and clear notes. Fingers up against the edge of the fret, the right side edge of the fret, squeeze in, let go. solitary high octave B there for the end. The main technique you're going to be needing here is from this point you should be head here. As soon as you hit here, head goes back to 7. Head here, head 7. Once you start getting down here at the 5th, it's a longer jump so you definitely have to laser ahead. So my eyes are here, sliding up, but as soon as I hit that harmonic, I'm back down to 3rd fret with my eyes. Here, my eyes are now at 12, and I'm back down to 1. So your head is going to be doing this sort of motion as you move backwards and forwards between the, the chords with your hands generally in the opposite direction, but that is how you're going to be able to nail this every time. This is now the Dulcegna El Coda moment. So it goes back to the top of the B section. And repeats all the way through the B section until we get to the A minor chord. And then we're back into this lovely... Back into the top of the piece and the cello melody. I'm not going over the rest of that because that is an entire repeat. It is just a decapo repeat of the first section until we hit the ending, which we will check out in the next microstudy. Hi, quick interruption here to the prelude. I just want to let you know that there is a ton of guitar goodness coming along to this channel, including Dean's, Koshkin, Tariga, all the greats, and Rauer. 
If you want to get in ahead of the action, subscribe to the channel and you will get notified as soon as I put the videos up. Let's dive straight back into Pirelli number one. Alrighty, welcome to the ending. I am not going over all of the uh, repeats, the decapa repeat. That is for you to discover if you haven't already on videos one and two. I'm just going to dive straight in from the E minor inversion chords. <laughs> here for the C sharp. So it's an E minor chord with the C sharp in the bass. E and M for the chords. Then your third finger could get down pre-prepared. This is in essence just an F major chord with an open B and E. And then we have E major with that sharp with that sharp C sharp again, which is the 13th. So it's a raised 13 chord. It's a lovely, wonderful Brazilian sound. You get it a lot in samba and bossa nova music. So the only thing you need to do is leave those fingers down and then to hit the sharp 13, fourth finger down, fourth finger off. Again, it's possible there to do a rolled chord if you want to on the end there depending on how you feel so if I play that all together all the way through the main tip here is to leave the fingers down to let the chord notes hang on Thank you very much for staying until the end. This has been a ClassicalGuitarRocks.com production. There are a ton of lessons up there. Most of them are free. There are also courses now available that you can take in the entirety of Villalobos' 12 etudes, how the etudes go into the preludes by Villalobos, Brower, Deans. There is a fantastic course on Deans. All of that is available over at ClassicalGuitarRocks.com. Check it out for some six string inspiration today.